ശരിയാലും <laughs> ും <laughs> All praises are due to Allah who has set forth his signs for those who understand. All praises are due to Allah who sent Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam as the guide to the straight path. And may all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of creation, the Imam of the messengers, the seal of prophethood. the master of the first and the last the grandfather of Hassan and Hussein Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and upon his noble family and blessed companions especially upon the four khulafa rashidin Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Hazrat Umar Farooq Hazrat Usman al Ghani and Hazrat Ali al Murtaza and all those who follow them until the last day ya ayyuhal mu'minun o believers seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand at the door of forgiveness because we are living in a time that has never seen that has never been seen on the face of the earth we are living in the akhir of the akhir zaman we are living in a time that every prophet warned his nation about we are living in a time that the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was concentrating on 1400 years ago and we are getting closer to the last events every day this world is not new this world is almost at its end even when the holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam saw the physical manifestation of dunya on the miraj the physical appearances of dunya on the miraj the dunya appeared as a very ugly old woman and it continues the dunya continues to rot and to decay rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam said in hadith sharif 
Between me and Judgment Day, there is only one and a half days left. O oh, believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took time to create our father, Adam alayhi salam. Everything else in creation was created with kun fayakun, be, and it is. And it appeared into existence. But for Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spent time and created him with his divine hands and blew the divine spirit into him. We are the children of Adam Safiullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us just to take in the breath of life, to eat, to have children, and then to die and to stay under the ground. He did not create us just for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in ahsani taqwim, in the most perfect form. He has said in the Holy Quran, that he has honored the children of Adam. So we must look to see what gives us honor. And we must look to see what takes this honor away from us. Today mankind has confused honor and pride. They walk arrogantly on the earth, stepping over the weak ones taking advantage of the helpless and they think living in palaces and being wealthy it gives us honor it does not honor does not lie in this dunya honor lies in the servanthood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the holy Quran Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in truth the most honorable amongst you is the one with the most taqwa. Sadaqallah al-Azim. But today, the world is running in the direction that is pulling the anger of Allah. Because everybody has put something above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their lives. Yes, we worship towards the Kaaba. But in our hearts, we have put idols before our Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept anything as priority before him. He is saying in Hadith Qudsi, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, I am the one, one who does not stand in need of a partner. If anyone does anything in which he associates anyone else with me, I will abandon him with the one that he associates with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything to be in the service of mankind. So that mankind will be in his service. And yet 21st century mankind is running away from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging mankind in Surah Al-Nam saying Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Who created the heavens and the earth and sent down for you rain from the sky causing to grow thereby gardens of joyful beauty which you could not otherwise have grown the trees Is there any ilah besides Allah? No But they are a people who swerve from justice. Or who has made the earth stable to live in and made rivers in its midst and set upon it mountains immovable and made a separating barrier between the seas. Can there be any ilah besides Allah? No, but most of them do not know. Or who listens to the distressed one when he calls on him and who relieves his suffering and makes you inheritors of the earth?
Can there be an ilah besides Allah? Little do you remember. Or who guides you through the depths of darkness on land and sea? And who sends the winds as heralds of good tidings before his mercy? Can there be an ilah besides Allah? High is Allah above whatever they associate with him. Or who originates creation, then repeats it? And who gives you provision from heaven and earth? Can there be an ilah besides Allah? Say to them, bring me your proof, if you are telling the truth. So how can we not run to Allah's service? How can we not fall into sajda before His greatness? How can we not make the reason of our existence to be pleasing to Him? Our Shaykh is teaching us the Hadith Sharif that is narrated by Hazrat Abu Zar radiallahu an, saying, We were sitting, a group of Sahaba, and the Prophet came and said to us, Which action do you think? Allah loves the most. Some of us said, the prayers. They said, no. We said, to make jihad in the way of Allah. He said, no. What Allah loves most is to love the one that Allah loves and leave the one that Allah leaves. And our Shaykh, Sahibul Sayyid, Shaykh Abdul Karim al kabirsiya Rabbani is opening the layers of this hadith saying Kafir is that one who is putting up what Allah is putting down and whom Allah is putting down he is taking that one and putting him up meaning showing value if we are showing some value to something that Allah doesn't like and Allah doesn't love then you are directly rebellious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are an unbeliever. You lost your faith. Whatever you do, that faith is not saving you because you are becoming rebellious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. This disease of becoming rebellious to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has infected the whole ummah in this 21st century. Yes, a person may be praying, he may be fasting, he may be giving his zakat, he may be going on hajj, but if we are keeping the love of that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts, then we have become rebellious to Allah. We have put another idol before our Lord and His commands in our hearts. Today's Muslims, they have adopted an attitude of, well, anything goes. Anything is welcome. Because our Lord is the Lord of mercy. He is the Lord of forgiveness. They are twisting the words of Mawlana Rumi saying, this is a way of love. Everyone is welcome inside. You are making zina, welcome. You are following the way of the people of Lut. Welcome. You are bombing and killing innocent children and women with your policies and your weapons. Welcome. And with this attitude, the line between Haq and Batil becomes blurred until people do not know the difference. And that is precisely exactly what the Dajjal is coming to bring. He is not removing the Haq. He's making the batil to be on the same level as the haq. And he's making people to accept it. And that is when the anger of Allah falls. As it is happening now. Because people think that they are working for haq when they are in fact on the side of batil. They claim to be servants of Islam. But they have left the door open to shaitan to come in and take over. 
Yes, we have reached to that time of Ahir Zaman that the Holy Prophet wasalam, said, before the hour comes, before the hour comes, there will be fitna, confusion, like pieces of black night. When a man will wake up as a believer, but he will turn into an unbeliever by evening time. Or he will be a believer in the evening, but he will turn to be a disbeliever by the morning time. The reality of Mawlana Rumi saying is that everyone is welcome. But leave. Leave your ego. Leave your desires. Leave your dunya. And leave your shaitan and your disobedience outside. Because the way of love it is to burn. The way of love, it is to understand that your existence is not real. And until you burn your own existence, you will never be able to understand the existence of Allah. Come inside to become obedient. Come inside to become a servant of Allah. Do not separate yourself from Him. And when a man is seeking the love of Allah and to uphold what Allah loves, his destiny will direct him to the friends of Allah. Because it is by being with them that the real faith wakes up in our hearts. Why is that? Why can't you find real faith by yourself? Because real faith comes through the prophets. And real faith comes through his inheritors. Real faith, it makes a man give up everything from this dunya. Because real faith gives a man a taste of ahirat. And the friends of Allah, they are already living in the face of this earth physically. But in reality, they are already living in ahirat. When Hazrat Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas accepted Islam, his mother became very angry with him. And she said, My son, what is this religion you have embraced that has made you to leave your mother and your father? Either leave Islam or I will stop eating and drinking until I die. Your heart will be broken. And your regret will eat you and the people will hate you. Hazrat Sa'ad said, O oh my mother, don't do this. I will not change my Islam for anything. But she didn't listen. She stopped eating and drinking and became very weak, saying she would not stop until he abandons Islam. Finally, Hazrat Sa'ad said, When one time she fainted in front of him in public, threatening him with guilt, pushing him to leave the religion of Islam by saying that this religion is breaking family ties and is killing your own mother. Hazrat Isaad said to his mother, Oh my mother, get up. I love you, yes, but I love Allah and His Messenger more. I swear to Allah, if you had a thousand souls, and if they were taken away one by one, I would not abandon this religion for anything. And yes, at that point, she understood. And she woke up a little bit. These must be our role models. These are our role models. Our Islam, our faith must be this strong for it to save us. Otherwise, with the faith that we have from this 21st century, it is not going to save us when we cross that sirat, with that bridge. Because under that bridge, so many fitnas, so many evils, so many desires that is just going to reach up to pull us 
if we are not walking the Sirat, understanding how dangerous walking on this faith, face of this earth is with our faith, we are not going to be able to cross that Sirat properly on the Day of Judgment. When real faith enters a person's heart, he becomes like Hazrat Isad. Real love enters our heart. We abandon whatever is keeping us away from Allah. Whatever chains us to other than Allah that is coming from our ego. And when we unchain ourselves from that, when we start loving our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincerely, when we start loving those whom He loves, and Allah will make a divine decree and declaration in the paradises, saying to the angels, saying to Hazrat Jibrail, saying to them, this servant loves me, and I love him. And I'm giving an order for everything in creation to love that one. And the angels, they will obey Allah and they will fly down to the earth. They will find that one who is a beloved to Allah and whom Allah loves. And they will circle around that angel, circle around that one with their wings of mercy. And wherever that one is, there's going to be peace. How are we going to understand this when we are not understanding our ego? How are we going to understand this when we are not fixing that nafsu amara to a nafsu mutma'in in this life? Changing it in the next life, it is going to be very difficult. Changing that ego in the next life, it is done through the fire. We cannot bear that. When we become servants of Allah, we will live every day remembering our breaths of life, they are limited. I am walking to my grave. And that type of thinking, that is intelligence. As Holy Prophet said, the most wise person is he who remembers death often and is well prepared to meet it. But today, this dunya is designed to make us forget about death. It is not designed to make us to remember. All the products in the market, they are to make a person to feel young. All the movies and the television programs are promoted being young. In the old days, the cemeteries would be in the middle of the town. You would walk by and say, my brother, my mother, my cousin, my friend is buried there. Soon I will be there too. I must wake up. But now they move the graveyards all the way outside so that nobody has to think about death. But that death is a reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question us about what we did in this life. The Holy Prophet is saying, the son of Adam will not be dismissed from the presence of Allah until he is asked about five things. How he lived his life and how he used his youth. With what means, with what means did he earn his wealth and how did he spend his wealth and what did he do with his knowledge. O oh, believers, the words of the Prophet والسلام, they must be taken seriously. These are not hadiths for us to memorize and just to use to show how much we know. To take one hadith and to put it into our lives sincerely until we die it is better than learning a thousand hadiths that you're not putting in your lives at all. And like that, we will be questioned. Understanding that knowledge of the hadith but not using it, we are going to be questioned. 
judgment day, it is a reality in front of us. Those who came before us, they took it very seriously. Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu an, the one about whom the Holy Prophet wasalam, used to say, if there was a prophet after me, it would be Umar. And Hazrat Umar, who was promised paradise, he used to stay up all night crying. Once when Hazrat Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an could hear Hazrat Umar through the wall at night, and Hazrat Umar was saying to himself, Ya Umar ibn al Khattab, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, you must fear Allah or he will certainly torture you. And when Hazrat Umar was passing from this world, he was calling out saying, a disaster to Umar if Allah does not forgive him. Majority of the Muslims today, mashallah, we have higher faith than Umar. Nobody speaks about death, nobody understands it, and majority don't even fear it. The signs of Qiyamat they have appeared in this world. The world is at its end. We should not be busy running after this dunya. Don't let the dunya be a burden that holds us back from ahirat. As Shaykh Effendi is saying, if you are stuck in the desert and you have a hard time walking, you cannot carry burdens behind you. Whatever valuable boxes and luggage you have, you have to leave it somewhere because you have to cross the desert. You cannot carry those things. Imagine if you have a big bag filled with gold. Are you going to carry that? If you have 10,000 pounds of gold, are you going to carry that gold passing through the desert? What are you going to do? It's 10,000 pounds. Oh, you cannot move it from its place. Sit over there and wait for the angel of death to take you there. Or leave it there and walk one chance of safety. O oh, believers, safety, it lies in following the Holy Prophet Safety lies in following the awliyaullah, the friends of Allah, the inheritors of the Prophet. Because we are responsible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in Surah Al-Mulk that when people are thrown into hellfire, it asks them. The hell fire is going to ask us. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Did there not come before you someone to warn you? They will say yes. A warner had come to us, but we denied him and said, Allah has not sent down anything. You are in great error. They will say, if only we had been listening or used our intelligence, we would not be among the companions of the fire. Sadaqallah al O believers, those inheritors, the awliya Allah, those friends of Allah, they are not the companions of fire. They are the companions of light. They are the companions of the garden. Be with them. Learn from them. They have come to show us the way to walk to Ahirat. If we don't follow them, we will end up lost and hopeless on the path, but lost and hopeless. Those friends of Allah, they teach us how to keep high what Allah has kept high. And if we follow them, we will end up in safety. Otherwise, we will be lost and hopeless in Ahirat. As our Shaykh is saying, you are saying the Shahadat and you are not knowing in which paradise your address is. Where are you going to go? Do you think it's just magic? Don't you see that the Holy Prophet ﷺ came and he had all the power in his hands but he didn't concentrate on miracles? 
He concentrated on building this religion on intelligence, on the foundations of intelligence. And what intelligence is the one giving man value. And that intelligence is the one giving man value. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us intelligence as a gift. And that intelligence must point us to Him. We must use that intelligence to make us progress more in the way of Allah and His Prophet. That intelligence is show us, it shows us that we need a guide. And in order to follow a guide properly and to reach the destination, we must be in the association and in obedience. That time, inshallah, Rahman, we will find safety. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 La ilaha illa wa hayyat wa atubu alayhi. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku la al-hamdi. Lahu al-shankadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku la al-hamdi. Lahu al-shankadir. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Lahu al-mulku la al-hamdi. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين صبح كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة توره صبح كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة توره صبح كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة توره إن دينا إن الله الإسلام قام الصلاة الله Allah, 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 Allah,